So my first thought when I came back from maternity leave and I knew that I had to preach on Children's Sunday was just to put Jacob up here and to let him babble it, y'all. Um, but I knew that he would get tired of it before you guys would. So, well, what comes to mind when you hear the word treasure? Do you think about Indiana Jones and the search for the Holy Grail? Or perhaps national treasure and the hunt for the Knights Templar treasure? Or maybe you, like me, have been watching The Curse of Oak Island for almost 10 years now, and you're still waiting for them to find that elusive treasure up in Canada. Well, treasure hunts are exciting. You may have a map where X marks the spot, and you search for clues that will lead you there. And when the treasure is finally found, there's usually a celebration. That's one kind of treasure that we may think of, when we hear the word treasure. Well, the other kind of treasure that we think of is a bit different. This treasure is made up of the things we value. Instead of trying to find buried treasure, this treasure is something that we already have. As a child, there were lots of things that I treasured, but one that stands out is my bowling ball. I absolutely loved to bowl. And before I get our bowling team excited, as it turns out, the thing that made me great at bowling was the bumpers. (laughs) But still, I love to bowl. And so one Christmas, I got a shiny, hot pink bowling ball. And I even had a bowling ball bag to go with it that was red and had Mickey and Minnie Mouse on the front. And this bag is where I put my treasured possessions. It had my bowling ball in it. It had my money in it, and it had my candy in it. What did you treasure as a child? What do you treasure now? As we focus on being intentional disciples, one of the things we must reflect on is what we treasure. Matthew and Luke both remind us of the importance of what we treasure. As Carter read earlier, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21 says, Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust, or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Our scripture from the sermon is similar. If you will turn with me in your Bibles or look on the screen or in your order of worship. Luke chapter 12, verses 29 through 34, from the message translation says, What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourselves a bank that can't go bankrupt, a bank in heaven far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is is the place you will most want to be and end up being. It's easy for us to get caught up in a treasure hunt of our own. It's easy for us to forget where our treasure should be and focus on getting more and more. From commercials on TV and ads on Instagram to what those around us possess, we can always find things that we want, especially close to Christmas time. It's easy to want more and more and to embrace money and our stuff as our treasure. And this is not a recent phenomenon. Earlier in Luke chapter 12, Jesus tells the parable of the rich fool. 
This man had a great crop, so much so that he wanted to knock down his barns and build larger ones to hold everything. But instead of being able to enjoy all that he had stored, all that he treasured, he died, and his things were shared with others. So as disciples of Christ, what should we treasure? In order to know that, we must look at what Jesus treasured. Jesus treasured people over things. Over and over again, Jesus showed the disciples and us how very important people are. Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman when no one else would. Jesus healed people that no one else would touch. Jesus wanted the children to come to him when nobody else thought children were important. Jesus treasured people. As followers of Christ, we too are called to treasure people. And some people are easy to treasure. Our families are mostly easy to treasure. Yes, I know, if you have to share a bathroom with your brother or sister or sit next to them for hours in the car, they may not be easy to treasure. But for the most part, it's easy to treasure our families. And these days, if you talk to me for five minutes, Chances are that I'm going to whip out my phone to show you a picture of a precious little boy. In fact, I've got a picture right here. I treasure that first cry when he was born, the first time he looked up at me, the first time he smiled. And I know that there will be an infinite number of other things and memories that we will treasure for the rest of our lives. And I will try to forget the things I don't treasure about this time, like lack of sleep and dirty diapers and crying. It's easy to treasure our families. It's also fairly easy to treasure our friends. They like the things that we like. They enjoy spending time with us, and we enjoy spending time with them. It's easy to treasure them. But then there are others who perhaps are harder for us to treasure. These are people who may seem very different from us, people we may not understand or with whom we don't agree, or people that everyone else ignores or makes fun of. It can be easy for us to ignore them or make fun of them as well. It can be easy for us to only stick with people we know and like, people with whom we agree on with most things, people who seem just like us. And yet, Jesus treasured everyone. And as disciples of Christ, we are called to treasure them too. Yesterday, we showed people in our community that we value them, that we treasure them. Each time we volunteer at or help places like Foster Care Foundation, the Must Ministries Neighborhood Pantry, North Fulton Community Charities, the Drake House, and more, we show people that they have value. When we befriend someone who others ignore, when we spend time with others who don't look like us, when we sit down and share a meal with someone who is hungry and homeless, We are treasuring people as Jesus treasured them. We are showing others that they are valuable to the one who created them. Well, it's not always easy to do this. Many times showing people that they are valuable means stepping way out of our comfort zones. It can mean going to Haiti or to Kenya or to Appalachia. It can mean sitting with a homeless person in a restaurant It can mean interacting with people you don't know and are perhaps a bit afraid of. So some of you may know this story. My youth group went to serve lunch at a homeless shelter when I was a teenager. And a few of us were needed to serve in the line, and a few of us were needed in the kitchen to make sandwiches for them to take with them for later. Well, I volunteered to make sandwiches because it meant being back in the kitchen, away from the crowd, And I was a bit anxious and nervous about being there. Well, when we had finished making the sandwiches, 
the person in charge asked us to walk around the dining room and offer refills of water and tea. And I was stuck. I had to go out and interact. So I nervously stepped into that dining room with a pitcher of tea. And I slowly began talking to people who were sitting down eating. And as I was talking to one man, he offered me a Christmas card. It was August, but it was what he sold. He was offering me what he had to offer. And I realized in that moment that he was doing a much better job of showing hospitality than I was. And that's what I was there to do. After that, it became easier for me to interact with those around me. I was reminded that Jesus treasures everyone, and we are called to do the same. Luke chapter 12, verses 33 and 34 reminds us to be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourself a bank that can't go bankrupt, a bank in heaven far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you most want to be and end up being. Well, Jesus not only treasured people over things, but he shared with them what he had. Jesus helped others have what they truly needed, whether it was a meal, whether it was support, or whether it was healing. And as disciples of Christ, we are called to treasure generosity. In a world where many treasure money and having more of it, we are called to share what we have with others, to practice generosity. That can be hard, can't it? Because generosity doesn't just mean giving our money. In some ways, that may be the easiest way that we can practice generosity. But we're also called to be generous in our spirits. To give with a generous heart because we want to, instead of because we have to or we're told to. To give others the benefit of the doubt and be generous with our faith in them, instead of jumping to conclusions. To give generously of our time and not just our money. Time is valuable. In fact, in many ways, our time might be more valuable than our money. We only ever have 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 365 days in a year. And the older you get, the faster those years seem to move, and the more valuable that time becomes. I can remember being one of these kids' age and feel like it took forever to get to Christmas. And now, sometimes it seems like, wow, It's already almost Christmas again. Time seems to move faster the older you get. And it's tempting to schedule every minute of every day, especially if you, like me, like to be organized and productive and check things off of your to-do list. But as we look at Jesus' life, we see how Jesus valued time. Jesus wasn't trying to be productive every minute of every day. He didn't tell the disciples, we're going to stay here for two hours, and then we're going to go here, and we're going to spend this amount of time there, and then we're going to go here next. Instead, he spent time with people. And I can imagine if one of the disciples had gone to Jesus and asked, how long are we going to be here? If I had lived at that time, it probably would have been me that asked that question. Jesus' answer would have been, as long as we need to be. Can you imagine how your relationships might grow and deepen if that was your answer too? Imagine how our lives might change if we took a deep breath, recognized the value of our time, and chose to spend it with others. The classic example of this that we find in the Bible is the story of Mary and Martha, two sisters. Martha was running around the house, cooking, cleaning, and making sure everyone had what they needed. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And when Martha got frustrated, as we all would if our sibling wasn't pulling their weight, Jesus told her that Mary had chosen the better path. 
Jesus wanted Martha to stop and spend time with him. In Luke chapter 12, verses 29 through 32, Jesus says, What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. And you'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. And when you do that, you may just find that your priorities change. You may even find that you are more open to hearing from God and saying yes to what God wants you to do. It can be hard to say yes to God, especially when it requires you to move out of your comfort zone or take a leap of faith. It can be difficult to trust that God is going to take care of us. But Jesus reminds us that God will give us what we need and that instead of worrying about it, we should be open to God's call. Our time is valuable. How are you spending it? The way in which we spend our time shows us what we truly treasure. As Luke reminds us, the place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Jesus treasured his relationship with God. He made time to sit in the presence of God. He went off on his own to spend time with God. And Jesus knew that spending time with God was the only way he would know what God wanted him to do. And it was the only way for him to stay grounded in his purpose. How are you treasuring your relationship with God? Let's put it a different way. How are you showing God that you value your relationship with him? I am guilty of sometimes putting my relationship with God on the back burner. There have been many days when God gets my leftovers instead of my best. There are days when I fall asleep in the middle of praying and when I live my life like I can do it all. But then there are also times when I make God a priority, when I rely on God to get me through, when I know that I cannot live my life without him. Many of you know that my pregnancy was difficult. I had some health issues that meant that we didn't know how long I would be able to carry Jacob. We didn't know if I could carry him long enough for him to be okay. And it was during that time that I felt closest to God because I prayed and prayed and prayed that that little boy would be okay, that he would be happy and healthy and grow, and that he wouldn't be born too early. And I know that many of you join me in praying for that as well. And God answered those prayers. We have a happy and healthy, precious little one. But God doesn't always answer our prayers in the way that we would hope. And it's in those times when our relationship with God is even more valuable. Because while God may not always say yes to our prayers that we desperately pray, God does promise to always walk with us. We are not alone. As David says in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. If we make our relationship with God a priority, if we treasure that relationship and work on growing closer to God, we will find that God can be trusted to meet our needs. We will be grounded in our purpose, and we will discover what God wants us to do. But these things only happen when we are spending time with God. Abundant life is possible but only when it is rooted in relationship with God. We are called to follow Christ, and we can do this by treasuring the things that Jesus treasured. When we treasure people over things, we show others the great big love of God. When we are generous with our time, our money, and our spirits, 
We help others have what they need, and we participate in the kingdom of God. When we use our time wisely and give ourselves margin to spend time with God and with others, we come closer to living as Jesus did. And finally, when we treasure our relationship with God, we ensure that our treasure is not on this earth where moths can eat it, rust can corrode it, or thieves can steal it, but that our treasure is in heaven. For where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Let's pray. Loving God, help us to live as intentional disciples of you. Help us to treasure others over our things. May we be generous with our time, our money, and our spirits. And help us to use our time as Jesus did, by spending time with you and with others, instead of trying to see how much we can cram into our days. Help us to always make you our treasure, O Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.